morning. Uh, second little video clip. Um, the first one was assembling the spoon mill um, after you've unpacked it. This one is about how to use a draw knife and a bent gouge to carve a spoon. Um, first one we're going to use, I'll move these out of the way and I'll talk about them when we come to them. The first one we're going to use is a bent gouge. You can see it's a gouge because the blade is curved and it's bent because it's bent. Um, this one is a stew by. Uh, you can buy this from uh, Carbotec Australia, Lie Nielsen Australia, Trend Timbers, lots of places sell stew by tools. This is a number 16 sweep. Um, sweep is the curve, the radius on the curve of the blade. Um, this one, the Stry, I uh, got this one online through Etsy and I think it was made in Georgia or Romania, somewhere like that, Central Europe anyway. Um, it's got a, a steeper sweep on it, it's got a nice deep sweep. This would normally be called probably a number eight sweep, something like that. That's probably about a seven or a six. Um, I like this one, and I think the reason I like this one, it's one, it's, it's cheaper than the Stubai, but that's beside the point. The Stubai is a better quality. But the Stry, um, the curve on, on the, the gouge, the bend on the gouge, starts right here at the bevel, at the ferrule here on the, the base of the thing, whereas if you can see the Stubai goes out straight for a while and then curves down. For some reason, that feels better in my hand. The way we use uh, a, a bent gouge for spoons is we don't use it like you would a normal chisel like that. Both hands on the, on the handle and pushing. Um, because it, it's, for most of the process, we're actually going to be working back towards ourselves. And you don't want to be doing these ones. If, if you break out, if you, if you hit a knot or a wriggly bit of grain and you put a bit more pressure, you're going to stab yourself. The way we hold the gouges, we choke it right down. Probably your middle finger up against the bevel there, the ferrule, and then hold the handle with your index finger and thumb and choke right down on it so that when you bend your wrist down as far as you can, you can't get yourself you can't accidentally stab yourself in the, in, the, in the wrist there. And if you keep your elbows tucked in tight, your elbows and your arms will stop yourself from stabbing into you. This is uh, a blank. This is what we're going to do some work on today. You can see it's, it's just been axed out. Um, it's all sorts of wonky shapes. But we're going, to f we're going to fix that. We're going to fix that up. The first part of the process will be using the bent gouge to remove bulk from the, the bowl. I've roughed out the shape with a straight knife, uh, axed it, and then just used a straight knife to fine it up. Put your feet on the inside of the paddles and push outwards, outwards and you'll see that the jaws pivot around the bottom of the head and come in and grip your spoon. You don't have to grip to push out too tight. Uh, it is a friction grip. Uh, you can put different materials on these jaws if you want. I've tried felt and I've tried stick on rubber stoppers that you put on the bottoms of cupboards and things and and they get chewed up and, and they work to a certain degree but it's all right as it is. So, gar choking down on the gouge, using both hands to control it, and basically it's a wrist movement. You don't pull with your, with your arms. It's just a wrist movement. We're going to work around here first, going downhill towards myself. Remember not to take 
too big a bite, just shave it out, roll it over. And then go across the grain to clean it out. Don't take too big a chunks, just take small shavings. And what we're trying to do here is just define the depth. The way I do my spoons, I don't carve the back of the bowl until I've set the depth on the inside. Then I turn it over and use the draw knife to come back to where I want to be and set the thickness of the bowl. Flip it over. And then coming down the grain, starting at the front. Um, and that will do for now. That's roughly the depth I want. We're going to check that again and refine it because, as you can see, this is a real scrappy edge. We, what we want to try and do is get a nice flowing curve from the front of the bowl. It sweeps down, then curves up, and then sweeps up the handle like that. So I'm going to define the rim of the bowl first by using the thumb push grip to push the back downwards. What knife is that, Paul? That's a uh, more 106 straight knife, Swedish. It's a very good knife. Um, the, it's actually uh, a laminated blade. It's got a high carbon core with a, so, uh, a, a low carbon, softer steel sheath to give it some uh, rigidity. Uh, my handle, I put my own handle on it because I found the, the stock standard Mora handles hard to hang on to. So you, you can do that. Um, starting at the front, using sort of a, a pivot grip and a bit of an assisted push with the fingers, just using the knife, take it up to the back, take out the transition, And you can see we've got a nice sweep coming down to there now. We're going to do the other side. Um, <coughs> potato peeler grip on this one. And then compare. Uh, get the top of your handle roughly level and then side to cross from one side to the other. And you can see, I don't know if you can see, but this side is lower than that side. So we'll go back to the other side and take some off that. That's the neighbours starting up. My daughter's going into town to do a supply run. We live about 30 kilometres inland from the coast, from Eden. Um, so we won't see her for a couple of hours. And that's probably about as, as good as we want at this time. At this point that I will now really define the bowl. And I'm going to use the hook knife for that. This is a Peter Von Trott hook knife. It's the only Australian blade I own. And it's a beauty. It's, if, you, if you're going to buy a hook knife that will last you your lifetime and do everything you'll ever need, Peter Von Trott. Look him up on Instagram as under Peter Von Trott, and you've got him. They're not cheap, but, mate, they're absolutely pearl. As you can see, it just, just shifts that timber lovely.
and again once this has been dried for about a week we're going to come back in and redefine these edges so don't get hung up on it straight away take the back out that side look at the thickness yeah it's close flip it over my granddaughter in the background there having her say in what's going on uh, yep as an eating spoon we only don't want it too deep otherwise your top lip can't clean it out probably four maximum of five millimeters Okay, so that is that. We don't need the vent gouge now. We're going to go to the draw knife. This is where the riser block comes in. Now you'll notice that the riser block, the pin on the riser block is off centered. That's so you can rotate it backwards and forwards. Um, you can rotate it there, you can get it closer to the jaws, or you can get it further away from the jaws. <coughs> Same here for supporting the handle uh, when you're doing various bits and pieces. It, it's a great thing. This is for doing the bowl, and, and it's a short spoon, small spoon, so we'll put it in the closed position. And you can see that it holds and supports the bowl, so we're not stressing the neck. This is where this cutaway on the side of the head comes in. You can see that it's tapered in and it falls away quite steeply. That is so that when we're doing the back of the bowl with a draw knife, we can get right down to the rim. If we find in this position we can't get down to the rim far enough without hitting the head of the bowl, uh, the, the horse, then we simply rotate that and move that further up to the front. Now we can. So it's multi-adjustable in, in all sorts of different ways. So we'll move it in there. Quick talk about <coughs> draw knives. That's a James Swan. Uh, it's the one I use all the time. For some reason I, I just like it. It's just feels good. The blade is quite, sh is, is short. I think that's something like about a 10 inch blade or uh, 100, 160, 170 millimeters. Um, this is a Stubai, the same manufacturer as the, the gouge. Um, it's almost straight. It's not quite straight, it's got a slight curve in it, the Swanee's got a, a larger curve in it. Um, you can get them straight and curved to various degrees. You can see the difference in the size of the bevel. Um, this one, uh, I've reground this, it had been used to shoe horses or something, uh, but it's now got a 25 degree flat grind on it, uh, maybe slightly hollow ground. Because when we're using the, the, the draw knife, we don't pull straight towards ourselves. That, if you pull it straight towards yourself, you're not slicing, you're not cutting, you're actually wedging wood out. Um, as a demonstration, if I was, I can press on that, and this is really sharp blade, if I can press on that and not cut myself. But if I was to slide my finger along it, I'd, I'd be looking for stitches pretty quickly. So we always try to put a slicing moment in. We, we try to not only pull towards us, but slide sideways and slice as well. This is where the length of the blade comes in. The longer the blade, the further you can travel down your job. So if you're doing like chair legs, um, then you want a nice long blade because you're doing long strokes. If you're doing short strokes, like on a spoon, you don't need a long blade. You just need something long enough to keep your knuckles away from your machine. 
The first part on this I'm going to do is I'm going to set the depth. So I'm going straight across the top. Don't take too big a slice. Just take it off. Curve it down to the front. And feel. I always remember that about spoon carving. Feel a lot, carve a little. That's as thin as I can go there, but I'm slightly off angle, so I'm going to square that up. And then I'm going to take the sides off. Both sides. Always, whatever you do on one side, try and replicate it on the other side. No need to get too anal about this because we're, we're going to go over it again later with a with a straight knife, fine it up. But. If you look on the side now, you can see that we've got a nice, a nice curve coming down there. That bowl is as an eater. You want it nice and thin. This front, I'm going to take off later. Leave a little bit of um, bulk on the front until the very end, the fining cuts, just so that if you drop it, it's going to give it a, a little bit of strength there, so you don't chip the whole front of your bowl off. Now I'm going to um, square up the, the whole thing. You can see that the, if I hold it like that, you can see that the handle is skewed out. It's at a weird angle to the bowl. Um, you can see that, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that in there, and I'm going to pop that in there, get that can see that that's sitting in there not straight so that's the angle I want to be so I'm going to take the back end off there for a start and we've got plenty to play with we've got plenty of meat under there so we don't have to get too fussed about it and then just keep it flat put it flat on the on the wood and then lift it just enough till you start to take a shaving and keep it at that angle. Be careful when you come down here that you don't shoot over cut and hit the back of the bowl there. No, still got a bit to go. That's a bit better. That's a bit better. Now I'm going to sneak up on it. I'm going to take some off the back here. Now this is where we flip. Because we want to do a curving cut, we flip over and we use what we call a bevel down. So we've got the bevel down and that way you can pivot off the back of your, 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 your bevel here and, and get a scooping cut. Because this is a longer bevel than the stew by here, I could probably get a tighter curve off the stew by rather than this one. But I don't want a real tight curve. I just want this to come off. So I'll take that off. And as you cut, just pull it out. That's probably still a little bit too deep in here. Um, we can take a bit more off that. Take a bit 
get off there. Bring it down from there. And curve it up and under. And again, this is, it's only roughing. The better you get, the closer you can get to your finishing cuts. Um, that's not too bad now. It, the sides are all out, so we might do a little bit of side work. I generally, as I said, don't like to do side work with a draw knife. I like to use my straight knife. But let's just clean this up. see here where I've gone in I haven't cleaned it out properly with the axe that's all right it's starting to look okay now all right so the way I do a spoon that's where I'd stop using the the, the big stuff the draw knives and that they tend to be you know, for shifting bulk. What I am going to show you now is, if I can find a straight knife, this lumpy looking area in here, you'll, you'll end up with, with something very ugly there. You can see there's an awful lot of wood in the back there that we don't need. So we can turn it over using the assisted pull grip, just do a scooping cut. Watching the thickness there, don't go too close to the bowl. This is this is the sort of cut you'd use to put a, a keel on a spoon, but I'm not going up to a sharp pointy keel. I want a flat surface on there so that when the spoon is on a table it will sit without falling over. Uh, you can either do the push thumb push grip here, or you can do the potato peeler grip. Depends how much you want to move it one time. Bring that edge up, that facet. It's about right. And what you end up with, which is something that's fun to play with, are faceted edges. You put this facet on and you get an edge and you start drawing shapes with edges and that's one but you can see it's, 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 it's chunky in here so let's take a bit more out That's roughed out. That's that's the spoon roughed out. As I say, it's at this point that uh, unless I'm just filling time and can't or just can't stop, that uh, I put it aside. It, it's still peaky up here. We we can do that with a with a straight knife. And basically, that's how you use a gouge and a draw knife to rough out a spoon.